this is just crazy excitement for this comic book. The Secret Wars was actually good for once. Yes. Hello guys and welcome to this week's Just In. This is actually the last lot of filming we're doing and then there will be no internet for me until I get it sorted out in the flat that I'm going to be living in over summer. Anyway, we'll just sort of jump straight in with what we're doing. First, we'll take a look at Action Comics 42. We're carrying on with our truth storyline. And this is Justice. And I said to Pete, I find that really fucking cheesy. And if the third month says the American way on the front, it'll be even stupider. That's not a word. More stupid! Anyway, this is the Hard Truth Part 2 storyline. It's written by Greg Pak and drawn by Aaron Kuda. Still, definitely, this is like my favourite storyline that's going on. I don't like this cover nearly as much. But I'll explain to you two kind of what happens. For those of you, if you don't know what happens in Action Comics 41, we just see a Superman dealing with not having superpowers anymore and living an ordinary life and he wants to sort of get himself back out there and he returns to Metropolis and there's a little camp called Kentville where it's like all the Superman supporters are and that's as much context as you need. Superman started fighting a shadow monster last time. That fight continues and he ends up using a like gas truck to just blow it up because he's like, ah, oh, cool, gas truck, that'll work. And he's like, wait, I'm not invincible. And then he's like, fuck it does it anyway and then he just sort of like the explosion happens and he goes flying and he's like oh look I guess I can fly again as like a little joke but this Superman's just like devil may care like awesome Superman and it also says like for more information on the shadow creatures don't forget to read Superman 42 which comes out at the end of this month so again it's like context which I'm looking forward to Kentville is then attacked and it's awesome because they're kind of like, they're charging in and Lee Lambert is sat and she's like, just everyone stay calm, just sit down, just don't do anything. And then a tear gas grenade, not bomb, yeah, grenade, yeah. is shot. And this guy just comes in called Dante with a baseball bat and knocks it back at the police. And he's just like, we shouldn't have to deal with this shit, basically. With the Superman fight with Shadow Creature, this is the, it's just a good fight. Like, it's not often that I'm looking at the panels and it's like, the fight's clear. But this was kind of like, as you're reading it, you can picture it perfectly in your head, the fight, which I enjoyed. But yeah, this rioting police force then, they go to attack Kentville and Superman like, just throws a chain across their path. And Superman's just stood with the chain and he's like, look, these are my people and I'm going to defend them. And they send in this Metro SWAT team that beat the living shit out of Superman. And they continue to shoot the tear gas at these innocent people. And the main guy, whose name is Binghamton, he, he's like a dick. He's like, I clean up after Superman's mess and... We die, we're policemen, we go out and we die. You don't, you have nothing to worry about. It was like, there's no bravery in that because you can't be killed. Which is an interesting thing, I thought. But he's like, if we taunt Superman enough, he'll fight back eventually and then I have every reason to arrest him. Superman does fight back and the last image in the book is just Superman punching this guy in the face and it's so rewarding. But that's basically all that happens in this. I loved it. Definitely a great continuation to the story. Some great moments in there. I definitely think this is still my favourite thing I'm reading at the moment. Truth storyline overall is great, but Action Comics, definitely the best. Definitely worth picking up. Would you guys pick this up? Uh, from what you said, yeah, it sounds pretty decent. Would you say it sounds like a good Superman story? The story itself does sound good. But looking like plainly at it, some some viewers may have its doubts because, you, like you said, it looks a bit cheesy. See it for the cover, but you know 
yet again, never judge a book by its cover. So, but yeah, definitely a good story. Yeah. So that is Action Comics. That's our uh, dosage of truth and justice for the week. Pete, you have. I have Groot 2. I so, have not read Groot 1, so what. Okay. What if. What's, what generally happens in Groot? Okay, so the basic premise of the story is that Groot wants to travel to Earth for like a holiday thing and he's taking Rocket with him. So they're just driving around space, going to Earth, and bad crap keeps happening to them. And that's that's basically Groot. Because you said it's quite like a just happy going like... Yeah, it's a it's a fun it's a fun story. Nothing really serious happens and it's drawn by a Disney artist. Yeah, the art So the was... art is weird, but I I'm getting used to it. I kinda like it now. I was gonna say, because I haven't like read it, you showed me a page and I was just like, oh, what the fuck? It's it's cute. Yeah. Yeah. Do we see dancing baby Groot at all as of yet? No, not yet. It's a shame. Does Rue grow his arm though? That's cool. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the end of Groot 1, Rocket got kidnapped because Rocket and Groot both have bounties on them. Yeah. Rocket didn't know how much the bounty on Groot was, but apparently it's like 10 times what it is on Rocket. Yeah. So Bounty Hunter comes after Groot. Set was for capturing Rocket instead, flies off, and then Groot's just floating around space. It makes sense that Groot be worth more. Groot's like the muscle. Yeah. Like, Rocket's good with weapons and stuff, that's great, but Groot is just straight up, like, muscle. Yeah, and Rocket was really offended that Groot was worth like 10 times. Yeah. Yeah. But that yeah, so that was Groot 1. Now, 2, it starts. Yeah, Groot 2, it starts with. Groot floating around space, which is where we left off from one, and he opens his eyes, and you see all these superheroes, but they all look like Groot, and they can understand him, and it's like heaven for him. Does he actually speak, like, sentences? You can understand Holy me. Holy shit. Yeah. Because, I was going to say, does it not get tiresome reading I am Groot You get used to it, though. Day? And, so... like... Even, I, do you want to go first? I was just going to say, that's like classic Disney art, just the way that guy's face is drawn. Yeah. Yeah, but usually when they when the characters hear, I am Groot, I, I'm drawing, I want to go all the way to say they understand him just by referencing the context of how he say, says it, and, you know, just goes along with it, really. Yeah, yeah. and Rocket, like, repeats what Groot has said afterwards, but in no. actual terms. Groot Electra in this new group world, says she loves Groot's accent. It's just oh weird. And then the page after, you see, what is it, Groot Lactus just coming to eat the planet. And Groot's really excited, and then he gets hit by a truck and, no, not a truck, a bus, and you see that it was all a dream and a fantasy and he's really disappointed. There's a thing in the back of here called Loose Leaf. Yeah. Which is an interview with Groot. Yeah. And they literally have written, I am Groot, over and over and over again as his response. Yeah, they have. I feel like Groot is one of the characters you can get away with doing shit like this with, and people aren't like, this is stupid. People are like, this is awesome, because it's Groot. To be, yes. fair, to be fair, I mean, this is Groot we're talking about. I mean, oh, no one... One day his bounty's like ten times as rocket. I mean, you know Groot, he's probably one of the most awesomest members of Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Groot wakes up from his floating nap thing, gets hit by a bus, people start shooting at him because they think he's a monster. And then we see years ago when Groot first met Rocket in prison. That was cool. Yeah. So these guards are picking on him because all he can say is, I am Groot. So he just he smashes them, basically, and he gets sent to solitary confinement, but Rocket is already in there, so they stay in there together, and ro at this point, Rocket can't understand him, but sticks up for Groot because he kind of feels sorry for him. Groot looks, just his facial expression, the way he's drawn, he looks 
evil, like a proper badass. Yeah, yeah, he is. Eventually, Rocket and Groot become friends. At first, they don't like each other. Well, Rocket doesn't like Groot. Um, but Rocket sees Groot being picked on, stands up for him, and suddenly Groot's his best friend. And because they spend months in solitary confinement together, eventually Rocket's ears can pick up on the different frequencies that Groot makes when he says, I am Groot, and he can understand him. Uh... So they... Oh, and he builds... Groot builds Rocket a nice bed in solitary confinement. It's all flowery and stuff. Yeah, because Groot's powers are like... Fucking weird. But They're just awesome. always convenient. Yeah. But uh, eventually they break out of prison. And by break out, I mean they, they completely blow up the prison. They join the Guardians and they, they, they're best friends. So Groot, now that Rocket's been captured, Groot goes to find him. Oh, and also uh, Groot got his arm ripped off when Rocket got captured, but he just grows it back. Does he grow back quite... Like, um... Well, not instantly. It does take some time. No, that no, looks no, no, instant. It's pretty instant. Oh, my. Yeah, it's cool. So, yeah, Groot goes to find Rocket, and then he gets hit by something. Again? And... Yeah, I was going to say, it's like in Thor when he gets hit by the car, yeah. like, three times. I know. And then it turns out to be the Silver Surfer. That's cool. And that is what the next issue is going to be. And all the Silver Surfer says is, he is Groot. So, that's cool. That's though. it. Is there another stupid fucking loose leaf thing? It's not all I am Groot. This time, this time they actually answer things. Oh. Uh, yeah, and it's just a fun story. I was gonna say it just it does sound just like like a fun. fun yeah, story. we have one more thing left this week. Oh, just as a quick note, um, this is I think this came out end of last week. Came out recently, mm -hmm. and I picked up Ant Man Larger Than Life, which is a one shot thing. Not going to go into it. I picked it up because the Ant Man movie is coming out. Actually, I had a lot of fun reading it. It's just like the first couple of stories of uh, Ant Man from Tales to Astonish. So I picked that up. But for once, I would say it's historic. It is awe inspiring that we have an issue of Secret Wars that was good. And not just good, but fucking awesome. So. So, of course, written by Jonathan Hickman and drawn by Ezard Ribic. Let us jump in and discuss. It starts off with a glimpse at a fight between the Cabal and the Thors, but that comes into play later, so that can just come into play later. What I love about this is the context given. So the fact that Doom was saying, all these incursions, it was the Beyonders. They were forcing the incursions together. They were going to bring about the end of everything. And what, like, Doom and Doc Strange, they, you know, looked into the power of the Beyonders as the universe was ending around them, and Doom was, he was brave enough to get the power of the Beyonders and save us all. And there's so much conflict in Battle World, you need somebody like Doom. And this is what Doctor Strange is saying to our characters that have survived. He's saying, like, we need Doom. That's why he's, n he's not that fussed that Doom's in charge. Mm. Whereas Reed Richards is like, what the fuck? Everybody else is like, yeah, but we need Doom. So I like the fact that we get a better understanding about I that. It, I think it's sort of like a two-way thing. Like, yeah, he, we, they have someone that they can, well... I want to go all the way to rely on someone that they can keep an eye on with the beyond his powers, as well as give hope and inspire. Spire. I mean, they also need to keep like to keep the world they live in in line, considering that's basically the only one they've got now. Yeah, they kind of do say, don't they? Like, count yourself lucky that there's anything left. Yeah, but it's weird because like Doom saved the world, but he's still Doom. Yeah, but he's still out for his so he's still forces. a dick. Yeah. I mean, oh, speaking of dicks, we get Cyclops, oh, um, Phoenix, God, who's like, get me started. who's like, oh. The minute, the minute they stepped onto that world, it's like, mine, 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 mine. <laughs> yeah, he basically is like, basically, we we should burn the world down and build a new one. If this world's not working, why can't we do that? And everyone's just like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, all like, all like, before creation must come destruction. Well, we, well we've already had destruction, and, and now we have creation. We're not going for destruction again. <laughs> Cyclops is just a 
dick. The are You think it might be the Phoenix side as well as Cyclops's? Nah, Cyclops is just a dick. Fair enough. Do you reckon, like, it looks, you can just see, like, almost, like, pencil strokes within the art? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the Beyonders are actually killed by Doom. This is when the fight comes back into place, where we see the Thors are fighting the Cabal, and one of the Thors is like, Doom needs to hear about this, so he's able to pray and project himself to say to Doom, like, shit's kicking off. I like how he's like, we'll win, but you should come help anyway, just in case. Because we can't win, because we have no chance in hell, <laughs> in hell that we're going to win. Yeah. yeah, it's also interesting that like, Val Richards refers to Doom as father an awful lot because people call him the All Father, but he he she just calls him father, and you're kind of like wait. But this is the thing: is the fact that Doom goes to investigate this battle, and then our team shows up. So you know we get to see Reed Richards and Spider Man, and all these people show up. And what's amazing is the fact that Sue Richards is like, there's something special about this one, and she's there next to Reed. But she calls Doom my love, and you realise that Doom has taken Reed's life. Also, Secret Wars 6 cover looks freaking gnarly. Yeah, so, oh, fingers crossed, Raise of the Dead, Raise of the Dead comes back. One thing that's worth noting is the fucking delays that plagued this book. This was supposed to be out July, June. 17th and it got pushed back to July so everything's been pushed back even the tie-ins have been pushed back which isn't good because all they have is Secret Wars so if all your books are getting pushed back you're not selling anything so I'm sure they'll like I think they're gonna work out I think sooner or later they're gonna work out a system once they be once they realize how ridiculous they're being I also like how Doom says like I spent years looking in every corner of every kingdom for some version of you when he sees Reed and you can see like his wide kind of worried eyes which I thought was cool. Like even though he's a god he's still scared of Reed Richards. I can still see see that Susan sort of recognised him when she calls him something special. Yeah. yeah. Or it's kind of just like a suppressed memory. Like they all remember what life like, somewhere in the back of their heads, they all know that this isn't real, but it's been pushed to the back, sort of thing. When Doom and Reed come face to face, they're basically like, oh, so you put yourself on the throne. We don't give a shit, like, you save people. Well, they, they're they like, good job, you saved people. We only saved ourselves. You saved other people. Good for you, but at the same time, like, you made yourself God. Dick move. I love Spider-Man where he's yeah. like, we're absolutely shocked, just flawed. But I like even Thanos chimes in and they're all kind of, the fighting has stopped just to turn the attention to Doom. Do you feel like Spider-Man in the, in his comic, he does, he does he actually talks a little less because usually he's like always like, like immediately with all the funny quips and every. But and he's, everything. I think it's because he's such a background character in this. Yeah. Like you want the attention to be on the more main cast. I also love the moment when Doom's like, Richards, and then the maker's like, is he talking to me? Yeah. Because I don't like his tone, and then Maximus is like, no, he can't be talking to you. Doom gives out his usual warning as well, which happens in fucking... I've saved the Incinibal in the face of total annihilation. He's... Now get now get on the floors. <laughs> he's get he's on the floors, doing afraid. the same thing that he did in the old Secret Wars, of like, look, just stay out of the way. If you stay out of the way, we won't have any troubles. And then they don't say that the way. Yeah, because basically Cy Phoenix Cyclops chimes in and you can see him like melting Doom away. Like, Spider Island looks good because Mary Jane's boobs are massive. Who poses that seriously? For whom? That's her showing all her goodies. But yeah. Agent Venom's in it too, which is cool. Anyway. A Cyclops steps in, and yeah, like, Doom just grabs him by the throat, and you're just like, fuck. And then he snapped Cyclops' neck, at which point I was like, yay, let's carry this over, and never have Cyclops back, because once upon a time, Cyclops was a likeable guy in the comics. He's just a dick in everything I read now, especially Phoenix Cyclops, so let's stop this. 
it's interesting because you're kind of like, I wonder how much of the X-Men and the Fantastic Four Marvel are going to try and push away before they get the movie rights. Like, Doctor Strange sends everybody else away and he's like, look, you know they weren't going to step down and you were just going to slaughter all of them. And this is where Strange kind of, instead of being the, like, uh, stay-in-line sheriff, he does kind of voice that actually he's not too pleased with Doom. And obviously Doom does not like to be challenged, but he, he just puts his hand out and we just see Doctor Strange just disintegrate away. So this is why I was like, fuck, like two big characters are dead. And it's like the start of the war. Like you can see battle lines have started to be drawn. Interestingly enough though, Doctor Strange says, I scattered them in the wind sort of thing. Because I doubt you could be like Thanos and Reed Richards, let's send them both somewhere together. Yeah. So I'd like to see if he literally has scattered them everywhere. What I like about this day is I feel as if this is all building up and you're just going to have that one epic big battle at the end rather than a series of battles. Yeah. I But yeah, with him scattering up these characters, I'd love to see like, say like Star-Lord and Thanos are like, where the fuck is everyone? And they're like, why are we stuck together? And like... And just battle it out and something like each one is pit. Oh, man, just seeing the Maker and Reed Richards like, yeah. I, but I'd love if maybe the teams shifted. So instead of it being like, oh, here's the Cabal and here's our heroes, some, you know, maybe Thanos is like, actually, you guys have the right idea and this Doom guy's a dick, so let, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all game to help. Like, that's what I yeah, want to see. Yeah, um, I reckon, this is just a side point, I reckon they're going to bring Doctor Strange back at some point, because if he's got a movie coming out, then they need to big him up as much as possible. Yeah, because you were saying as well, on the front of, yeah, Secret Wars 6, you just see, like, there's, like, zombie Modoc and zombie Doctor Octopus and stuff, and they said about the wall and how you have all these undead creatures over the wall. Like, where they threw um, Captain Britain over. It wasn't Captain Britain. It wasn't Captain Britain. It was, it was Jamie, the other one. Jamie Braddock, they threw over. Yeah. Yeah. In a way. Because that's interesting and cool if they were just like, hey, Thanos, over the wall. Yeah. Or if, like, even if Doctor Strange miscalculates and then oh, Thanos, yeah, and just Thanos just gets up and he's like, what the fuck is this? Why have you done this? Anyway, guys, to sort of wrap it up, I would say with this. This has fully restored my faith in Secret Wars. And now when I say I'm excited for the fifth issue, it's not because I'm like, God, I hope it's good. It's because I'm like, yeah, I can't fucking wait for it. So, yeah, Secret Wars in my book now is getting somewhere. Because I said, if I was reading these in a collected volume, I probably would be fine. But we've been waiting so long for just something to happen. And, and finally with the delays as well, which yeah. makes it all worse. Anyway, guys, that's it for this week's Justin. I believe next week is Batman and Batman Superman will be coming out. And so continuing our truth storyline as well. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Comment down below and let us know what you thought of these books as well. And don't forget to subscribe for all this goodness and stuff got a new channel trailer up so you can see all the stuff that happens over on this channel. Go over to facebook.com slash comiccommonsyt. That's our main hub where you can check out competitions and all the videos and what we're up to. Go over to Twitter and go to at Music Ninja Matt. Use the hashtag comic comments and you can ask any of us a question. Also, down in the description below, there is the playlist for comic comments so you can just watch absolutely any episode that you want and yeah we hope you've enjoyed and we'll be seeing you in the next one so it'll be goodbye from me bye from me see ya